So I've been thinking a lot about hair, more specifically men's hair. I have long hair and that's one of the first things that people notice about me. Despite long hair being fairly popular, it still makes you something of an outlier amongst men. My question is why? How did things become the way they are? When in Western culture did short hair become associated with masculinity and long hair associated with femininity? This is a brief history of men's hair. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because it really does help out. It is amazing how happy a boy can look after a haircut. Believe it or not, during the Stone Age, human beings were not too big on grooming. During the Ice Age, however, water vapor from men's mouths would end up in their beard and cause frostbite. To avoid this, we began using sharp rocks and shells to cut off the longer parts of our hair. Fast forward to ancient Egypt, where they were big on haircuts and hygiene. Soon, the practice would even spread to ancient Rome and Greece. While we might picture ancient Greek philosophers with long hair and beards, their hair was still considerably shorter than the hair of the women of their time. In an interview with the BBC, former editor of the Hairdressers Journal, Rachel Gibson said that people have been styling their hair since time began for the same reasons that we do today practicality, decoration, tradition, or customs, and to show allegiance or involvement in a particular group or part of society. Hairstyles signify a huge amount. In an interview with Time Magazine, Kurt Sten, author of Hair, A Human History, says, in order to have long hair, you have to be healthy. You have to eat well, have no diseases, no infectious organisms. You have to have good rest and exercise. He also argues for long hair as a symbol of wealth, as in order to have long hair, you have to have your needs in life taken care of even more so with elaborate hairstyles that require help from other people to achieve. Because of this, Western men of power and status would often have long hair, while the common man would have the short hair that we associate with modern masculinity. In the 1600s, European soldiers wore their long hair in ponytails to further differentiate them from the peasants. Who would ever want to get mixed up with regular people, am I right? Many men of status from the 1700s, such as our founding fathers and even European royalty, had a habit of wearing white powdered wigs over their hair. Why, you may ask? Well, the answer, folks, is syphilis. More and more people were losing their hair prematurely and needed a way to cover that up. But why then would they fall out of fashion just as fabulously as they had come into it? Well, for one, they were pretty dang expensive, being a status symbol and all. It was wealthy, educated men that were the ones wearing them, but the world was changing and changing rapidly. Mila wanted to be in the video, so here she is. <laughs> With the Age of Enlightenment in full swing and the common man getting more and more attention, there wasn't a lot of love for wealthy elites. Soon enough, the Whigs in France would find themselves on the wrong end of a guillotine, and we all know how that went. In the 1800s, a lot of men wore their hair in a sort of middle ground. Not too long, but not too short either. During this time, we can see an explosion of facial hair, with beards, mustaches, and sideburns becoming a lot more popular, some of which are quite funny. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put Mila down now. For the most part, men's hair would get progressively shorter and shorter throughout that century. In the late 1800s, you see a lot more goods and services focused on hair coming to prominence, such as barbershops, pomades, and razors. The modern mirrored barbershop of today is quite different from the tonsorial parlor of 50 years ago. But the barber's work remains the same. In the early 1900s, a lot of American men would wear short, slick down hair, often but not always accompanied by a mustache. This would persist through the Great Depression and World War II, but as the world became more complicated, so did the hair of the men that lived in it. A barber shop is a combination of many things, old and new. In the 1950s, figures like James Dean and Elvis Presley provided hairstyles that would be copied by countless young men across America and the entire world. Famously, a lot of young women protested Elvis having to get a haircut when he joined the army. In an interview with the CBC, Lori Tharps, the author of Untangling the Roots of Black Hair in America, talks about how many black Americans needed to emulate Eurocentric beauty standards to not be seen as inferior. And so we went from loving our hair and carefully caring for our hair to covering up our hair and trying to emulate European styles, but not because we thought they were pretty. There was none of that. The emulation of European styles was to push back against the idea that we were inferior or that we were animalistic. If the white slave owners were going to tell us our hair is what makes us inferior, then we're going to say, well, if I can make my hair look like yours, then I'm not inferior. I'm just like you. Soon, many black voices of the era would be wearing their natural hair instead of trying to fit in. It wasn't about a style. It was a form of protest to say, I'm not going to straighten my hair anymore. So the black afros that we associate with people like Angela Davis or the Black Panthers of the Civil Rights Movement really became a symbol of resistance. Scholar Deborah Pergmont wrote that inferences and judgments about a person's morality, sexual orientation, political persuasion, religious sentiments, and in some cultures socioeconomic status can sometimes be surmised by seeing a particular hairstyle. The modern practice of American men having long hair goes back to the hippie movement of the 1960s. These people were rejecting societal norms, including the conventional men 
men's haircuts of the era. This was seen as quite rebellious at the time and was even dramatized in the musical Hair. Gibson states that movements such as the end of people wearing wigs in high society demonstrate a marked change to culture and reflect what was happening in wider society at the time. The long hair of hippies wasn't just about a group of people wanting to wear their hair differently, it was about rejecting the ideas of a previous generation in opposition to the Vietnam War. I'm planning on making videos in the future about the 1960s and hippie culture, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Now, various subgroups in American culture were using their hair as a way to express their identities. One reaction to the long hair of the hippies was the short, clean-cut hair of the yuppies, or young urban professionals. This conservative style was common in people who worked on Wall Street or in business of the era. Cue Patrick Bateman. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. Other subculture haircuts include the famous punk mohawk and the hair metal look of the 1980s. Men are no more without vanity than women. Now it seems like we're at a place where people can do more with their hair than ever before. I see countless men dyeing their hair and wearing pretty unconventional haircuts, which is pretty cool considering how long it took to get here. I remember watching Disney Channel as a kid and really wanting hair like what I saw on TV. A lot of the hair that I liked was long hair, some of which is easy to look back at right now and cringe, but hey, what are you gonna do? Mila, let's stop scratching the curtain. Come on, you got moved. For one reason or another, I just never grew my hair out when I was younger, and I honestly regret that. I believe the last short haircut that I ever got was right before my high school prom. For about a year before that, every time that I got a haircut, I would ask them to leave it a little longer and a little longer just because that's something I had never really done up to that point. The growing out could be pretty awkward at times, and my parents were always telling me to go get a haircut, but here we are. Something I've experienced as a guy with long hair is that a certain genre of older man will come up to me and be like, brah, you need to get a haircut, brah, which has always just stricken me as really odd. I mean, do I? I like to think I keep my hair pretty well maintained, but to each their own. Short hair, of course, is still the norm, but hey, do whatever you want. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. I did that once to try to dry my hair and I almost passed out. My question is, what hairstyle do you have? Do you get weird comments on it? And what's the weirdest thing you've ever done with your hair? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and enjoy the rest of your day.